Hi everyone, last video I mentioned calculating the time to impact of a missile chasing a target as an example of a problem that could be solved using the kinematic equations. In this video we will be working through such a problem. Let me define the problem a little more precisely. So there are two objects A and B which start a known distance apart. I'll label this H for head start. We know the initial velocity and acceleration for both objects and we're required to calculate how long it will take for object B to reach object A. We're going to start by solving this problem on paper, so to speak, and then afterwards we'll actually test our solution by programming a simulation in the Unity game engine. If you'd like to try and figure this problem out on your own, now would be a good moment to pause the video. Alright, so we're trying to solve for time, but as discussed in the last episode, we need three pieces of information to find an unknown value using the Suvat equations, and we only know two things about each object here. A good approach in situations like this is to try and determine an unknown value for one object in terms of the unknown value for the other object. In this case, we can do that with displacement. Even though we have no idea how far object B is going to have to move in order to catch up to object A, we do know that we'll have to move the same distance that object A moves, plus the initial distance between them. Thus, we can say that the displacement of object B is equal to the displacement of object A plus H. So now that we have this, we'll want to select an equation that solves for displacement and also contains our two known variables, initial velocity and acceleration, as well as the variable we're trying to find, which is, once again, time. Equation number three is the only one which fits the criteria, so we will grab that one. We can now use equation 3 to substitute in for displacement A and displacement B. We've now successfully arrived at an equation with time as the only unknown variable, so we can get to work solving for it. Note that I'm using a subscript A and B to indicate which of the two objects a variable belongs to, and importantly, time does not get a subscript A or B because it's of course going to be the same for both objects. Now, we could substitute our known values into the equation at this stage already, but I'd like to keep working with the variables to arrive at a general solution for this problem, and we can substitute the values in at the end. Let's start by multiplying everything by 2 to get rid of the fractions. We can then move everything over to the left-hand side to get the equation equal to 0, and I'll also arrange the equation starting with the terms containing t squared, and then the terms containing t, and finally the constant term, negative 2h. We have a common factor of t squared in the first two terms, so let's take t squared out there. And in the next two terms, we have a common factor of t, so we'll take that out as well. This is now easily recognizable as a quadratic equation. If you think of the general form for a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, then in our equation, acceleration b minus acceleration a is the a in the general form, also called the quadratic coefficient, 2 times initial velocity b minus 2 times initial velocity a, is the b in the general form, also known as the linear coefficient, and negative 2h is the c, or the constant term, in the general form. Let's write these all out. So you're likely all familiar with the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All we have to do at this point is substitute our calculations for a, b, and c into the formula to get a general solution for time for this sort of problem. This equation will of course give us two solutions for time because of the plus minus sign. The solution where we subtract the square root term will be negative, which of course is meaningless to us in this problem, so we only care about the solution where we add the square root term. To arrive at a final answer, let's now substitute our known values into the equation, and as mentioned, I'll replace the plus minus sign with just a plus sign. Simplifying this gets us to 112 over 28, which equals 4. So that's the final answer. It will take 4 seconds for object B to catch up to object A. Here is a graph of the solution for anyone interested. It of course takes the form of a parabola, and our two solutions are the intercepts with the x-axis at 4 and negative 1.43. I thought it was interesting to show how, as the acceleration for object B is decreased, the amount of time it will take to reach object A increases until object B's acceleration is less than that of object A's, at which point the parabola flips upside down to give us two negative solutions, of course indicating that object B will never catch up to object A. 
All right, time for the second part of this video where we program a simulation of the problem in the Unity game engine. I've got a simple scene set up here in Unity with a orthographic camera and two sphere objects A and B. You can see object A is 40 units ahead of object B. I'm now going to create a C sharp script called motor and we're going to be attaching this to both object A and B. So let's open the script up and create a public float initial velocity and a public float acceleration and then a private float which will be the current velocity. In the start method we can then just set current velocity equal to the initial velocity now we'll be moving these objects in fixed update instead of an update as we normally would because this gives us an easy way to increase the accuracy of the simulation by decreasing the fixed update time step. So we can say void fixed update and in here we'll want current velocity to increase by acceleration every second. So we can say current velocity plus equals acceleration times time dot fixed delta time. And then we'll want to actually move our object, so transform.translate vector3.write multiplied by our current velocity multiplied by time dot fixed delta time. All right, let's save that. And now in Unity we're going to create a second class, which is going to be our timer class. And let's just create an empty game object called timer to actually attach this to. Open that up. And in here we're going to have a public static float called the predicted time. And then we're also going to have a public reference to both of the motors. So object A and public motor object B. In the start method we'll now want to calculate H, the distance between them. So float H is equal to object a dot transform dot position dot x minus object b dot transform dot position dot x. All right, let's now calculate a, b, and c. So a we know is equal to object b dot acceleration minus object a dot acceleration. b is equal to two times, so I'm taking two out as a common factor, two times object b dot initial velocity minus object a dot initial velocity and finally c is simply equal to negative 2 times h. All right, we can now say that the predicted time is equal to and here we're going to be substituting into the quadratic formula so negative b plus mathf dot square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, close parentheses, divided by 2 times a. All right, let's just delete this update here, we don't need it. Let's also then do a printout of the predicted time. Then in the motor class, the fixed update uh, method is only going to run if time dot fixed time is less than timer dot predicted time. So we'll enclose all of this in that condition. All right, we can start out by testing the values from the actual problem. So I believe object A had an initial velocity of 19 and an acceleration of three, and object B had an initial velocity of one and an acceleration of 17. All right, let's quickly go into the timer and assign object A and object B. Quickly go to save the scene and then we can press play. So we can see four is printed out as we calculated ourselves. And once four seconds have passed, the object stopped moving. And you can see that at this moment in time, B has just overtaken object A. Now, if we up the acceleration, say of object B, let me change this to 30 and press play. 
It's changed to two and a half seconds. And you can see that this is getting less and less accurate. Uh, object B has actually gone quite a bit past object A at this point. So what we can do to increase the accuracy, as I was talking about earlier, uh, is in the timer class, we can create a public float called time step, set this equal to 0 0.02 by default. And then in the start method, we'll just say time dot fix delta time is equal to time step. So let's try the same thing, but with a time step of say 0 0.01. So we play this now. And as you can see, it is very close to perfect. Obviously, I'm not suggesting that you actually use a lower fixed delta time value in your games. I just wanted to demonstrate how decreasing the time step will improve the accuracy of the simulation. All right, that is everything for now. So until next time, cheers.